And we are live for the Steelers Depot live stream here on Monday, December 13th. As always, I am Dave, I'm not Dave Ryan, I'm with Dave Ryan. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at, yeah, I, only in my dreams. Uh, I was looking at my YouTube trying to pull up the, uh, the live chat here on my phone. I am Alex Kazora alongside me with Dave Ryan. You think I'd be good at this after how long we've been doing these for. But uh, as always, we're here to answer your Steelers questions for the next hour from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. So be sure to get your questions in the chat. I already see a bunch of them in there, so I appreciate that. Dave, how are you doing? Doing good. I'm gearing up for this Monday night football game. Have had a lot of time to just sit around and watch a lot of football, and uh, that's not a bad thing overall. Mm -hmm. So after I pulled my I'm Ron Burgundy moment, let's dive into the chat here. And our first question, again, uh, questions here, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. If you want to have a guarantee of your question being asked and answered by myself and Dave, you can send us a super chat, and that will put you to the front of the line. So uh, if there's any audio issues, as always, please let me know in the chat. We'll start here with Mark Leslie, who says, was listening to the podcast today, and you mentioned Jimmy Garoppolo as one of the quarterbacks mentioned for next season. Is that a realistic possibility? He's a name I thought of, but I don't know how possible. You're right, Mark. We haven't mentioned his name too terribly much throughout this process. It certainly seems to be Garoppolo will be one guy on the move this offseason. You know, we don't know for sure about Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, or maybe a Matt Ryan or someone like that, but it's a pretty safe bet based on the reports, at least, that Garoppolo is going to be on the block this offseason. So Kyle Shanahan, who can uh, start Trey Lance, their first round pick this year. So I personally would be against that idea, but I don't know where you fall in on that, Dave. I mean, I I don't think I would trade for him anything of substance and have to also carry. I think he's got something like a $24.2 million base salary. He's got per game uh, roster bonuses, I I, I, I think, attached to that as well, too. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, the way the current deal set up, I mean, to. To, to, to trade for what could potentially be a one-year rental and not have anything worked out after that. Uh, I mean, what are you talking about giving up for that on, on top of there? I just don't see it at the current number. Uh, I don't know if there's another team out there that'd be willing to trade and, you know, kind of a sign and trade kind of deal. That way they, they, they get them extended and, and go from there. Uh, it just... Uh, the reason I bring him up is because it's a name that you see, you mm-hmm. know, that, that you're seeing in, 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 in the circles right now and all. Uh, I mean, I, there's no way I give up a first or second round draft pick for, for a guy that's making 24.2, really more than that. And, and, and also, you know, him only be on his final, final year of his contract as well, too. And I, I think that's going to be a lot of teams out there. So I think yeah. any team that does trade for him, would do so with the idea of kind of a sign and sign and trade kind kind of type deal, you know, knowing that they have a long term deal worked out with them uh, after trading for him, and then then kind of go from there. The only other option would be for the uh, uh, for the 49ers to cut him outright, and you know they would probably want at least something for him if at all possible uh, when it when it comes to that. Now I don't think they have a lot of dead money to eat, you know, when it comes to that. So they might say, hey, look, you know, give us a you know, fourth round draft pick for him and he's yours kind of, kind of, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Just that just so they get something and don't have to cut him there. But uh, it's just one of the many names that I have a feeling we're going to be talking about during the off season. Yeah. I just don't like the idea of trading any sort of assets. And I think it might be a second or third or some combination thereof to get Garoppolo, probably not a first, but with the way the quarterback market is, those prices are always inflated in, inflated in terms of, uh, you know, contract money and, and, and draft capital. Um, you know, I, I would not want to trade that kind of asset and resource for a middling guy who's not a franchise guy, not really a long-term fixture. It's going to make your team maybe good, but not great in a very competitive AFC with some, some of the best quarterbacks in football. So I, I, I would rather just sign a free agent where I'm just paying money and not you know draft capital or going whole hog and trading for Aaron Rodgers if theoretically he was available. I wouldn't take this weird middle ground of a okay-ish top 16 quarterback and give up draft picks in the process. Now, I think a team can win with, with, with Jimmy still, but I, I think that team also needs to make sure they have a good defense, right. you know, because I, you know, uh, I don't think he's going to be the type of quarterback that, that's going to put up a, a ton of points for you and be, you know, top, top, you know, eight, nine, 10 around in there. But I, I do think a team, and I, I said this years ago, I thought 
uh, uh, you know, once Jimmy got out out of New England, I thought, you know, within about five years, I thought, I think there's a good chance that he might win a Super Bowl. Now, I think we're coming up pretty close on, on, on that time frame there. So I think a team can win with him if he's in the right offense and he's utilized correctly. He's got the, you know, uh, the, the right weapons mm-hmm. and all. But uh, on the flip side, though, I do think that, you know, that said team also needs a good defense to go along with him. Yeah, you need a, you need all the right pieces around him to make that kind of a run. And if you're trading draft picks, it's harder to obviously do that. So a name to watch, though, for sure. Mike Adesso, hi, guys. Aren't Dotson and Hassenauer eligible to come off IR by now? Any word on them? Can they play on the D-line? Just kidding, kind of. Um, they are eligible. Uh, at least Dotson is. Is Hassenauer eligible? Uh, Dotson went on uh, on the 14th, didn't he? Uh, yes. So I know no, he's wait, wait, no, no. He, he was on eligible. the COVID list on, on the 14th. When did he go on the uh, – uh, when did he go to IR? I forget the date. I know he's eligible, though, because I know Dr. Mel was projecting a, a return for week 15. So Wednesday will be the date to see if he gets uh, activated or not. Yeah, and, and you know, that's going to be uh, – yeah, assuming J.C. – did J.C. go at the same time? Mm, or was he a week behind? I think he was a week behind because Haas now replaced Dots in the following game and then got hurt early in that one okay. with the uh, – Peck injury, I believe that he had. All right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the rule is that they've got to miss three games. Mm-hmm. And uh, then, you know, if, if, if healthy enough to do so, they can obviously resume practicing. And that, that resuming practicing opens up a 21-day window. And then within the 21-day window is when a decision has to be made to place them back on uh, the active roster. So even if Dotson... I mean, I, 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 it, it depends on how he is in his rehab and, and, you know, physical. One would think, though, that at least the player would practice at least a full week before mm-hmm. activated back to the roster. So even if, even if we got word on Wednesday that Dotson was back resuming practicing again, I, I don't know. I, it just feels like it would be at least a, uh, a you know, uh, he would at least miss the Titans game and then come back against uh, the Chiefs. Now, obviously, there's not a lot of games left in the season. And if you thought you could get a healthy version of Kevin Dotson out on that field uh, 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 against the Titans, then you do it. I just, I'm not convinced that he would be, you know, in, in, mm-hmm. in, in the right physical condition to pull that off. Yeah, that'd be the thing, the conditioning. He's probably been off his feet for three weeks, healing up that ankle. So that's the question there. David O says uh, November 20th for Dotson, the 27th for Hassenauer. So Hassenauer should not be eligible yet. That'd be next week. Dotson is eligible to begin practicing this week. David O needs to send me some of them chocolate covered pretzels, is what he needs to do. <laughs> I saw that. They look good. <laughs> Got a super chat here from Chupa Thingy 6173. $10 super chat. Thank you so much. Says for the love of the algorithm, we appreciate that. But on a serious note, not sure if I'm being overly critical, but I've not been impressed at all with Showbert. Is it just me or is he struggling to cover and tackle? No, it's not just you. And Wes says the same. I think if it wasn't for Devin Bush's immense struggles this year, there'd be a lot more attention paid to the struggles Joe Schobert has had. And I thought I thought Schobert was worse against the Vikings than even Devin Bush was. I thought Schobert played maybe his worst game of the season against Minnesota. He has struggled almost to the same degree as Bush. Not quite so, but close. And um, he has not been what the team hoped for when they traded uh, for him over from Jacksonville. Uh, look, I mean, neither, neither one have been, have, have been great. And, yeah, if we weren't talking so much, I, I thought Joe Schobert was kind of middle of the road against uh, uh, the Vikings. I, I, I kind of thought he's had – Maybe worse games than that overall, but uh, look, they, they just not getting good play from from either inside linebacker position right now, mm-hmm. and uh, that's killing this team. And you know, when you have the the the, the you know the, they're they're trying to search for the uh, defensive tackle up front, and man, you know, bugs uh, bugs went from a healthy scratch to missing the next what two or three games with with an ankle injury. It doesn't seem like, and, and now that they have Mon, Montrevious Adams, it looks like he's going to be the guy in the middle. Uh, going to be interesting to see what they do uh, with. Uh, uh, with, with, with Carlos Davis now, you know, mm-hmm. is he going to start getting a helmet over Henry Man- Mondo? If if we get into this week against the Titans now, and if Davis at even at this point get can't get a helmet uh, over Henry Mondo, what what does that tell you about right. about his future from there? And this is a kid in Davis that we really still haven't seen. You know, a lot of overall snaps from really the, the 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 last large subsection of snaps that he played was, I think, against Dallas last year. And that tape wasn't awful at all. But, you know, we really haven't seen much of him uh, other than preseason play out of there. And, you know, if he can't get a helmet over Henry Mundo this coming 
Sunday against the uh, against the Titans. Man, I don't I don't know what to think about that yeah. at that point. Well, I don't that's know not, what would change. That's not a great sign. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going to change to get Davis active all of a sudden. I mean, he's been a healthy scratch. I mean, unless it's truly been a conditioning issue, Mondo probably will continue to play over him. We'll see. Uh, I mean, if he does, that's not a great sign at all no. for Carlos Davis no, uh, at all. Tim M with a twenty dollars super chat, far too gen- generous. Tim, thank you so much. No uh, you, comment there associated. If you want to have a, qu- a question uh, asked later on, Tim, please, uh, Leslie, you do not have to send in a second super chat to to do that. But thank you just the same. Go back to the questions here, Zachary Prospa. What's your bold prediction for the remaining season? His is Baltimore zero and four. Steelers win division on a three in one run and beat L A at home. New England on the road and lose to KC in the AFC. I assume that means title game. So are, are your predictions as bold as Zachary's, Dave? I'm guessing probably not. So, so I don't know what some of y'all are eating <laughs> <laughs> or drinking drinking out there or smoking. I don't know. Uh, look, uh, I mean, I think I think it's pl- – look at, look at these teams in the AFC North. I mean, this is – the AFC North shaping up just like I thought it might shape up at the beginning of the season. You know, uh, just these teams beating the snot out of each other. Uh, depending on what happens with, with Lamar Jackson, it sounds like it's a low ankle sprain. But even so, they – I mean, Alex and I went over the schedules of all these AFC teams or AFC North teams in, in, in the podcast this morning, and, you know, all of them have tough roads there. Uh, if the – I don't expect to beat the, the Steelers to beat the Chiefs in, in Arrowhead. I think that's just asking way, way too terribly much, especially mm-hmm. the way the, the Chiefs are playing right now, and especially that Chiefs defense. You know, you got those guys up front, Chris Jones, Melvin Ingram. Those guys are playing well. They got a good secondary, a, 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 you know, play, back playing, I, I think, to the level they, they could. So let's, 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 let's go ahead and give that one a loss. Uh, the Titans obviously don't have Derrick Henry. That's huge for them. Uh, the Steelers are getting the, the you know, Tennessee in their own backyard. I, I think that's a winnable game. At least it should be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, man, coming off of a long week, I mean, uh, you're not going to have many excuses built in if you lose this game. I'll tell you that. And I know the Titans have a good record, yada, yada. But, I mean, this is uh, this is a team that, that, that really I, I think is beatable. So then it comes down to – you know, what's going to happen in these final two games? I think the Steelers can can at least play with uh, with, 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 with Cleveland and Baltimore. You know, my best case scenario, I think, is this team three and one mm-hmm. in the final four. And a worst case scenario, I would I would say probably one and three uh, somewhere around in there. Uh, if, if obviously if they win three more games, they would be nine, seven and one. Maybe that'll get you in. But even if they get in this, this team is not going to go yeah. very far in the playoffs. I don't think. Yeah, I don't have a great bold prediction for you, Zachary. My predictions suck as of late anyway. I think I'm 0-3 picking the last three Steelers games, so uh, you don't want to hear what I have to say anyway. But uh, I I hope your boldness comes true. I suspect, though, it will not. Mutated Genome, Alex, did you notice that the O-line has reverted back to not helping up Ben after being sacked SMH? Yeah, I saw that in particular on the last sack that Ben took on a third down and it was the one where all the linemen looked at each other and, and kind of looked at whose fault it was and no one helped Ben up and maybe Gentry did. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I mean, I harped on it once. I'm not going to harp on it over and over again, but uh, not a good look there. Yeah. Hey. How, yep. Don't, don't, don't get him blasted. <laughs> yeah. He got, blasted. He got yeah. blasted uh, way too many times uh, early in that game. against if I can stay down, Ben, don't get up. Don't get up champ. K. Jackson, Pittsburgh. Hey, guys, should the offense start the game in a hurry up or no huddle? Why not infuse that earlier in the game? It's not sustainable, but waiting until you're down significantly is crazy. Yeah, I get that sentiment. James Washington speaking with the media today, talking about how the no huddle provides a spark for them. But, you know, as you say, you can't use it all the time. I don't want to oversimplify the issues and say, if you just want no huddle and put in Derek Watt, that's going to cure all the problems. A lot of fans and even some media types seem to think that those are the number one and number two issues with this team right now. But uh, point taken there, and if you can kind of use it as a change up, it's easier certainly to do that at home, though, than on the road. And so it's uh, when crowd noise is less of an issue. So that's something to consider as well. And look, I mean, on the road on a short week, I don't, I don't know how much people expected them to use that, you know, in, in that situation. Now, uh, you know, might we see it uh, maybe a tick more uh, outside of the 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 opening script and maybe the first half? I suppose it's possible. Look, this team's got a lot more problems than whether or not they move move faster or not. They can't even, you know, as Alex even showed uh, uh, in, in in a recent video there, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Man, this this team makes way too many mistakes 
uh, you know, unforced errors, if you will. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't even run the plays right. Now you want to run them faster. They can't even you snap know? the ball. They couldn't snap it Thursday. Right. Literally. Right. So, yeah, a lot of issues there. I would like to see more pistol now. And that's something Alex and I talked about mm-hmm. this morning. Now, uh, if you want to infuse more pistol and maybe, you know, like like I said, I, you know, I, I could see maybe a, 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 another series and maybe a first half of a game, especially against Tennessee and all. But you're not going to – that's not sustainable throughout the game. What what happens if you get in a situation again and late in the game where you're down – you know, more than more than a couple of possessions and you want to use that. And, you know, do you, do you want to have your guys gassed, you know, uh, from from moving faster earlier, earlier in the game? I mean, it's an easy thing for people to to to, to, to kind of point to. But it's just also not the thing that you're going to be able to do that's sustainable throughout mm-hmm. a full game. Tim Chase, is there a chance of moving James Pierre to safety next year? Pierre currently a cornerback. What do you think, Dave? Man, you get it, you know, just get you another safety is what you need mm-hmm. to do. Uh, if he was going to be a safety, I would I would view him more as a free safety type. And you already got one mm-hmm. of those in Minka. You got a uh, uh, you obviously drafted a, a, a Trey. Uh, and, you know, you would you would think he would kind of be the you know the guy to be the backup at that position. Trey Norwood there. Mm-hmm. So uh Merely moving guys at, from one position to another because they're not working out of one position is not generally the way you want to go, especially with undrafted free agent types. Yeah, and usually when those guys get moved from corners to safety, it's an older guy, you know, a Joe Hayden type when the speed starts to go. Lack of speed isn't the issue with me and, and Pierre's game. Um, he's not a burner, but he can run with guys, and so I don't think safety is going to really do anything differently than – uh, cornerback, and I think he has the traits to be a corner, and you want to give him all the opportunity to show something there, although he has, of course, struggled this season. Russ Obenstein, good to hear from him. Haven't heard from him in a little bit. $5 Super Chat, thank you so much. The comment, though, kind of strikes the tone of where this team is at. Guys, O-line is a disgrace. Not only to quit on Ben, but can't pick him up was embarrassing. No respect for the Hall of Fame quarterback. Yeah, I know that was an issue brought up post Raiders game. Actually, I the one. I think I'm. The, I think I'm the one that kind of sparked that conversation a little bit. And things did get better, but um, there was a lot of frustration, a lot of anger, a lot of confusion against Thursday's in Thursday's game against Minnesota, and uh, it didn't look pretty in, in basically every single way. And now people are already talking about it. you want to throw two more rookies at this thing next season, and then we, and then you could have two second year players and two 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 rookies uh, uh, potentially uh, on that line. Just go out and you know buy you a better guard or you know better tackle maybe, uh, and maybe draft uh, Lin, Lin, Linda Baum, you know, and, and get him settled in there at center. And I don't know what move, move Kendrick Green to fullback. That's my best <laughs> suggestion. He'd probably yeah. make a great fullback. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, ki- I'm kidding. At least I think I am. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, the guy's got to learn how to stay on his feet better. That's just something that, that, that we're seeing more of with him and the snaps. And, man, everybody, if you, if you say a rosary, say, say, say an extra one these last four weeks for Kendrick mm-hmm. Green. And you could really see the frustration from Ben in that game. Um, and, and so that was, you know, just, just emotionally speaking, it was unusual to see from Ben. Mike Adesso, why is UG3 not an option on defense? He's playing anyways on special teams. Why not give him a try in coverage or dime? Can't be worse than Marcus Allen or Bush and Schobert. It's a good question. I don't have a good answer for you. They're just starting to bring in some of the other backup linebackers to play. Marcus Allen, his first snaps defensively against Minnesota. Buddy Johnson, same with him, his first career NFL snap. So, um, you know, could UG3 get moved there in the future? Possibly, but uh, they're probably going to start with Allen and Buddy Johnson, because Allen's got some more experience, more playtime, and Johnson is the rookie that you know they want to kind of see what they have in the present and, of, of course, in the future as well. Next question will come from, let me scroll down and find it here, Lumberzak asking about Joe Schobert. Do you guys think we keep Joe Schobert another year? He's been a mixed bag for sure, but he's got a pricey contract next season too. I don't know if I'd want him back, but what else do we have Understood. I don't know what else they could turn to, but that's usually a bad argument to keep guys because you know there are always other options. And if a guy's not playing well, you can find better options and see what you have in Buddy Johnson year two. So I'm mixed on that. Dave and I had a discussion on the podcast today about that. I don't know where I come in on Joe Schobert right now. You know, 8.7, uh, 8.75 base salary. That's going to be tough to swallow for a guy that, you know, uh, 
Uh, you're playing like he's playing right now. Yeah. You know, the, uh, who knows, right? You know, could, could, could you trade that away? Probably no. not. I wouldn't think so. So, uh, uh, but then again, you know, do you want to have the bodies around just in case in, injury strikes and then make the decision uh, closer to, uh, 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 to, to the first week of the season? We'll see. Uh, I mean, I don't think this, I don't think this this team's going to be in a situation where you have to get into the quote unquote you know um, uh, uh, March uh, new league year cap casualties. Who knows? But uh, but you want to uh, utilize that cap space because if you keep them till week one or you know in the summer, then you can't go sign a free agent because that you, that money's accounted. Yeah, but, but that that eight point seven could also be kind of your in your head buffer for in season money. Also. Right, but you so, can't guarantee that because if someone gets hurt and you have to keep Schobert for whatever reason, then that buffer goes away. So you can't bank on that. I don't think. Well, then, then, you know, it, to me, it boils down to having capable, healthy, the healthy bodies. You know, do you really mm-hmm. want to deplete yourself at the position to save, uh, you know, 8.75 million minus, you know, whatever the displacement cost uh, yeah, is on that kind of stuff, you know? So, and I think he's got per game roster bonuses and, and, and all like that and stuff. And well, you know, what, what the Steelers are more apt to do is if he, you know, if he was to to stay, is probably try to work down work down that number, mm-hmm. uh, because uh, the Steelers hate dealing with those those, uh, uh, you know, do something like they did with Vance McDonald in his uh, going into his final year, you know, make those uh, 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 per game roster bonuses go away and and you know lower that base salary by by, by a little bit on top of it there. But yeah. uh, I I think it's fifty fifty right now. Uh, here's the thing: a guy needs to play better in the final four games. Period. Yeah, he does. It's just a question of is he worth the money that he's scheduled to make? And right now, it's hard to say yes to that. Got two super chats and two big ones. I got to start with one of our biggest ones ever. Although I'm not sure what the currency uh, exchange is here, but from Ivo G, our Bulgarian friend, who has a question that I saw earlier. So I'll scroll up there and find that. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, I, I just saw it a moment ago, and I saw he has a couple other comments as well. I can't find. The question, though, but I saw some of the comments there. He did say at one point here, there it is. Hi, Alex and Davis, the Bulgarian announcer again. We had three Steeler games here, and I had them all win at Buffalo, win at Cleveland, and win versus the Ravens. We are four announcers, and NFL gives us four games to choose from 10 Tuesdays. I think if I chose the Steelers all the time, we would have been 17 to 0. So Ivo is the key <laughs> Get on to uh, the Steelers' success, for sure, for sure. So thank you so much for the Super Chat. Thank you so much for hanging out with Dave and I. Another super chat here from Farlap57, a $5 super chat. Thank you so much. Says, hello, guys. I want to know what the linebacker, what what linebackers are not keeping their gap assignments. Just my opinion. Inside linebacker, Terrell, Witherspoon, free safety, move green. So I'm not entirely sure what those last couple of words are. Just I think just rattling off some of the players. Um, it's everybody. It's hard to say just one guy isn't doing his job. I and mean, it's been, as David said, popcorn. It's been multiple issues, some scheme stuff, some, some number problems, some bad box counts and just bad assignments and, and, and a poor job of getting off a block. So I wish I could distill it down into one person and one issue, but, um, not able to do that because it has been so problematic across the board. And, and you know, you see early in that game, they uh, the Steelers uh, put uh, put put their dime personnel and they motion a uh, motion a player out of the backfield and 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 and, and you know, Steelers, I believe in man coverage and that and motion the guy right out of the box and then run right where he was at. <laughs> yep, for a big game. <laughs> you have nobody, you have nobody in that gap to even fill it because uh, you get you get out schemed right right there at the uh, at the start of the game there. Yeah, uh, a lot of issues for sure, and and it, it's hard to even know where to begin. I think uh, our James Wilford's working on a run defense problem video that'll be up next twenty four hours or so. So looking and forward you, to do that. Do you do you remember a de- the run defense at least as long as we've had access to all twenty two? Do you remember a run defense this bad uh, for, uh-huh. for, 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 the, for the Steelers? I I, I don't. I mean, la- it's just, statistically, uh, the last time it's been this bad has been about the sixties. I mean, they're 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 thirty second in run defense right now from a yards per carry standpoint. I don't know run success rate. I don't know where they're falling, but probably not high. I'm guessing they're probably near the bottom, if not at the bottom. So, I mean, it's been when I say historically bad run defense, I mean that in a literal sense, a historically bad run defense. Hey, John, we forgot to tell the folks that John Simon's uh, on the practice squad now. 
Yeah, only about five years after we called for it. We sound a lot smarter. But, uh, yeah, the Steelers signing John Simon to the practice squad and uh, getting Joe Haig off of the COVID list. So, you know, hey, if they want to bring up Simon and play over Tusco, I'm all for it. Hey, have at it. At least he can probably set the edge or knows what he's supposed to do when it comes to, to setting the edge in, this, in, in, in that situation. Look, you get what you get this time of year. And mm-hmm. John Simon obviously passed his prime, uh, yada, yada. But, I mean, it, it, uh, uh, you take your hat off and hand to hand it to him for doing something here, and it is you would it feels like it would at least be an upgrade over Derek Tuska at this point, and then you kind of go from there. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And plus, look a little bit of gamemanship involved here, right? Right. Uh, because uh, uh, John Simon was uh, cut one week ago, I think, from the uh, from the Titans there. So you get him under that bright light uh, in that table there, and in, in in the defensive meeting room, you start grilling them and try to find out what you can what you can find out about the uh, about the Titans uh, uh, scheme, and maybe maybe use that a little bit against them. Now, how much you actually get out of them, how much is changed. You know, obviously they're going to know that they're going to change signals and all like that, but maybe you get some useful, a little mm-hmm. bit of useful uh, inf- information out of them. And John Simon, obviously well-traveled has played in, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of, a lot of defenses si- so quite similar uh, to, to what the Steelers run. So I, w- I would think just a more of a, uh, uh, a verbiage type uh, barrier for him. Mm-hmm. And now we'll sit and wait and see what happens on Saturday and, uh, obviously, you have uh, T.J. Watt banged up, and 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 Alex Highsmith dealing with a quad, and who knows how that's going to play out the rest of the week. But uh, maybe at worst, you get him up, uh, 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 you know, on the active inactive roster on Saturday. We'll see. Yep, Simon, a well-traveled man, but it does feel like just plugging one hole in the Titanic. It's a lot of a lot of problems, right. but it's it's better than nothing. So I give him credit for that. Tim Chase, another five dollar super chat. Thank you guys so much for the uh, the flurry of super chats tonight. Certainly appreciate the support here. Says uh, a free agent corner we can get after the season's over. I'm not sure, Tim. It's a good question with Hayden his deal expiring. I have not looked at a list of corners and you know that kind of stuff. So it's a good question, but I won't have an answer for you for uh, a little bit, Tim. Hey, I think you gotta yeah gotta ask yourself what is Joe Hayden, uh, you know what would you be willing to pay Joe Hayden to come back? Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, and how many games could you expect him to miss if he does come back and then, then kind of go from there. I mean, if you go out and really, really hit the market hard, you're going to pay, pay, pay some, you know, high premium for a top free agent cornerback. That's for sure. I haven't even looked at the list, to be honest with you. Yeah. I have no idea who would be available with Hayden. Like Hayden's played well. He's been this team's best corner this year, but man, you're going to put more money into a guy who's getting older, has injuries, can't really run that veteran savvy only gets you so far. So like, I I love that guy, but I just hard to justify bringing him back. Looks like Gilmore, I think, will be a free agent, but he's, he's long in the tooth now. He's well, he's what? 32. Uh, Kyle Fuller, uh, Chris Harris Jr., Patrick Peterson's 32, uh, uh, and Jason Verrett, Kevin King, Xavier Rhodes, all these guys. Uh, Xavier Rhodes is 32. I didn't realize he was mm. that old now. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you might be in a boat where you have to re-sign Akella Witherspoon, give him a couple mm-hmm. of million, you know? I think so. That might end up being your 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 best shot at some of this because some of these other guys it it doesn't you know Casey Hayward he's thirty three now man where I've gotten old here yeah these are guys we scouted now they're I know. All old we're all old Dave so yeah we'll see maybe you resign Witherspoon and draft and that might be with some other like lower level mid to low tier free agent corner you bring in and then with Sutton and Pierre's development maybe Witherspoon as well you see what happens and Norwood probably in the slot. Uh, let's go back to the questions here. And again, 117 people in the chat. That's a high for quite some time. So thank you guys for that coming off of a Steelers loss. Uh, hey, Dave and Alex, this, this is from Noah Baker. What do you think the, the chances are of the Steelers resigning Terrell Edmonds, knowing they have so many holes to fill next season? Well, as Dave and I have talked about the history of guys who don't get their fifth year option picked up, that, that usually doesn't spell anything good for their return. Maybe there's a chance for Edmonds because that safety market's usually more depressed and it might not cost as much money as the fifth year option would have demanded. But um, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know, Dave. I, I'm still, I'm kind of 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 on that. 
Yeah, once again, you know, you're talking about a position, especially a you know a strong safety position. I think that that you know comes with kind of a depressed market as it is. And you look at the names out there. Uh, looks like you know Marcus May is going to be a free agent with 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 the Jets. He's currently earning uh, it looks like 10.6 million. Marcus Williams with the Saints, 10.6 million. Uh, Kareem Jackson with the Broncos is 34 years old at the five million dollar mark. So, uh, you know. What happens if you don't re-sign him? The, let, let, yeah, let, let's whole... attack. Let's attack it from that angle, because and... it's not going to cost much to re-sign him. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I wouldn't think it'd cost you more than three or four million dollars just off the top of my head uh, per season. So let's attack it from the, from the aspect of what happens if you don't re-sign him. Then there's a, a hole at strong safety with no internal candidate to fill, and you'll have to go sign someone for a similar amount of money or draft somebody to step into that role. So I believe it was you earlier in the offseason when we were kind of you know, speculating that said you could maybe potentially see him being back. And, you know, it, that might, you know, people aren't going to want to hear it. I think but, it'd be smart to bring him back. But that might might end up being the Steelers' best option. Because do you really expect a safe unless you spent a first round draft pick mm-hmm. or you know a first or second round draft pick on a you know incredibly smart playmaking box safety, then you know you're gonna have to find somebody to to you know a free agent to come in and and pick up the defense and play you know and play you know play along with Minka and and learn each other you know so it that might end up being the Steelers best option now mm-hmm. uh you know were they smart not giving him his uh, picking up his fifth year option and, and paying that ex you know that what was it six million or whatever the, mm-hmm. the number is there absolutely but uh will is there a team out there that's going to be willing to pay Edmonds I don't know four or five million a year we'll see he would be foolish not to at least Sure. Test free agency, I think, but uh, I guess the chances, I don't know, 50 50 right now. Yeah, maybe a bit better to come back because Edmonds, for his warts, and he certainly has them, is a pretty safe known guy. You know what you have. So, are you going to save a million bucks in free agency to sign some more unknown guy and hope he's about as good as Edmonds, but take the chance that he's going to be worse than him in whatever respect of the game or draft pick and ask for a rookie to step in with more turnover defensively? Is it really worth it to to explore that that door number two? It probably isn't. And I I think that you know that's the best way to answer the question is say what happens if you don't resign them. Right, and I don't mean to fall back on the what other options do you have as I said with Schobert, but I think the situations are are a bit different there, uh, especially with the money involved. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Now, now nothing prevents you still you know, re-signing him and, and drafting a kid later right. and seeing what you can get there and obviously bringing in a couple of couple of free agents, uh, undrafted free agents, those kind of things there. Uh, but uh, I mean, I and I haven't even looked at the class of of, of of strong safeties at all to 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 know what that looks at there. But I mean, this team's got so many holes. Do you want to really, you know, you you could go, you could probably easily re-sign him for for at least two years and you know, work on it from, from that end. He is not the reason this defense is as bad as they are this year too. Now right. he obviously has his warts. He's not the playmaker that, that, that you kind of hoped he would be, but uh, he is far from the top three or four issues this defense has right now. Question here from Jason Bodine. Hello, Daleks. Two part question. In your opinion, which is the greater need O line or D line? And is it O line because of having found a gem in Montrevious? Again, we'll let's just see Adams over these last four games. I've been impressed by his start, but it is just that a start. I think the greater need is the O line, assuming that Tuit and Alu Alu will return next year. So if those guys come back and there are some ifs and question marks there, I, I grant you that. But you'll have you know, you'll have Hayward, you'll have Tuit, Alu Alu, Wormley, Loudamoke. Those five or your six that you carry on the fifty three, plus your backups with Davis and Adams and whoever else, you know, gets in the mix, bugs, et cetera, Mondo. So um that the health alone will kind of shore that up. Hopefully, offensive line though is a different story. Yeah, look, I mean, the biggest question mark you have there on that defensive line is what's going to happen with Stefan to it. Not only enough you know, to close out this season, but past this season. You know, right. uh, you give us the, the give us the answer to that question, and it's it's a little bit easier at least to try to work with uh, f- uh, uh, from there. Uh, 
uh, Alu Alu, you hope that you can at least get another half a season out of him. What's going to happen with, uh, obviously, with uh, 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 either one of the Davis twins at this point? I mean, once again, we talked earlier in this in this very very chat about, man, if he can't get a helmet over Henry Mundo in these final four games, you know, what what, what do you really have there? Uh, you would hope that, uh, you know, even though there's, you know, the Georgia kid, you know, is a very you know, good defensive tackle, strong uh, prospect. But do you really want to spend an early round draft pick on on that position uh, there? Whereas, you know, maybe pick up someone a little bit later there. It'd be nice to know that you got to it back and 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 Alu Alu and, you know, uh, you know I, see if they can re-sign Adams to serve as a backup potentially, that kind of thing. Yeah, a lot of pieces there, but but you you would agree O line is the bigger need of the two. Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah. you you've got you got to you got to get that offensive line in a much better shape. Absolutely. Question here from Mister Yaya: Can we still make the playoffs? And do you think Ben can play well next year if he returns? Yeah, they can still make the playoffs. I think it'll take going three and one and probably beating both the Browns and Ravens in Week Seventeen, Week Eighteen. So is it possible? Sure. Is it likely? Probably not, based on where things are at right now and can Ben play well if he returns yeah I think he can play well it's a question of will his body just allow him to do that it's so beat up it's so just battered from an entire you know career and of course the the beating he's taken this year especially 30 sacks already this season um will he physically be able to to will himself to go through a whole nother year that's the big question to me uh it's plausible they make the playoffs. I, you know, even if they do, I don't expect. I mean, I, look, I had them. I had them winning the division, uh, nine and eight record. Uh, in, you know, before the season started. Uh, uh, even if they get in, though, man, it's just with the way this defense is, and it's just hard to envision them. You know, even winning one playoff game, to be quite honest with you. I mean, and if they won one, it's even harder to envision them winning two. As far as Ben past this season, uh, you know, the only the only way Ben's going to work past this season you you got to get the get the get the uh, offensive line uh, in a much better shape and you got to get this defense back the way it was a couple of years ago uh uh to have any chance whatsoever because Ben's obviously not you know he is what he is as far as a a deep passer goes but as Alex and I noted or I noted this morning on the pie you know that that game against Minnesota in that in that barn of theirs over there that air conditioned barn was you know for at least from an accuracy standpoint one of his better Better showings, I thought. So, I mean, he can, you know, he still knows what he wants to do. I, I think he can still read the game. Uh, overall, I think he has, you know, good enough uh, intermediate uh, stuff. But, I mean, you got to have explosive plays in the NFL, period. And you got to have a running game uh, to, to go along with a veteran quarterback that doesn't have the mo- mobility or the ability to extend plays uh, like, like Ben. So, there, it goes back into, man, all these check boxes, you've got to make sure you get marked off. Uh, you know, so we'll see what happens the rest of this season first. Todd Sokowski says, is Mondo really that terrible? I know I've been really critical of Mondo and I like the guy, like he's a, he's a good athlete. He runs well. Um, I kind of like him in camp a couple of years ago, but he has not played well this year. He's not a no stack. He's kind of been that square peg in the round hole. And, um, he is just, whenever he's on the field, the Steelers run defense struggles mightily and that's not all on him, but he is not helping out. And so he has really been poor this season man he wouldn't even be on the 53 man roster if it wasn't for uh you know uh to it and and uh alu alu and mm-hmm. you know the, the issues that davis, you've had up front yeah. there davis and, and those kind of things he wouldn't be even be on the on the 53 man roster i don't think charlie doyle do you think the steelers way of building a roster every year without ever rebuilding is a good way to build a super bowl contender um it's worked well for a long time, for you know, fifty years. But um, the Steelers' way is, is is a is more layers than just that, I, I guess. I mean, I've always kind of found that to be a little hoity-toity. It's a little silly to me, I guess, the idea of the Steelers' way. But um, you know, I think this team, I think the philosophy, if, if Cobra's the GM, Tomlin's the head coach, will generally be the same. There'll be certainly a rebuilding element to it and a retooling element, but. Uh, his team wants to compete. I think they've always kind of just had that mindset. This whole franchise has had that, and it's kind of hard to to break that, um, you know, in in one season. It's not like they keep this list locked up in a safe and says do this, do that, and do that. I mean, obviously, if they would, they they would have won a lot more. You know, uh, at least won a playoff game uh, in the last several years here. Uh, I think 
that they need you know one of my one of my biggest things and I, I you know Alex and I have talked about this several times man it seems like they get so locked in on 25 kids during the pre-draft process they uh i'm a big fan of of ras scores and 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 uh obviously p spark scores and all like that but you can't ignore the tape as part of the part of the study and i'm all about good character and those kind of things you know that that, that go along with that but uh even that's not enough and man for for a team that builds through the draft if you go a couple years you miss on guys like Artie burns you miss on guys like like uh like terrell edmonds you miss on guys like jarvis jones uh uh, you look at Devin Bush and the struggles he's having right now. That hurts a team that builds through the draft. And then on top of it, I mean, this team quasi does more in free agency maybe than they've done in past years. But even so, they're more about re-signing their own and just kind of, you know, bargain binning it. And I, I, you know, they're gonna have to start spending. You know, more, I think, in free agency to get some of them top tier guys, especially if they want this thing to turn around on a dime, you know, uh, because when you look at the holes, looking ahead at 2022 right now, I don't know why Ben would want to come back to be quite honest. I don't know why Aaron Rodgers would want to mm-hmm. come here. You know, th- th- those those kind of things there, because, you know, I hate to be, you know, uh, uh, negative Nancy, you know, at, at this point, but it, it's not appetizing looking ahead at 2022 right now. Yeah, I've compared them even before this year began in the summer uh, to the Patriots, where they were at a year ago. They lose Brady, they go through a bridge year with Cam Newton. It's a pretty poor year overall. They spend more in free agency. They find their quarterback in uh, in, in Mac Jones, and they kind of you know hit the ground running for 2021. And so hopefully Pittsburgh can be in a similar camp there, but uh, that one year transition is the, the, the quickest they can go. And usually it takes longer than that as the Steelers experienced in the post Bradshaw era. So who knows? Uh, let's see. Next question will come from Mr. Balls, who wants another shout out. I think he asked for one last week. So hello, Mr. Balls. Thanks for being here. You know, r- r- real quick mm-hmm. about that. You know, and I, and I, I told the guys in Steelers Brazil, uh, this as well too, when I was on their show recently and, and, and made this a point about that. I mean, if there's any hope whatsoever, you should look at the Patriots and see what is happening, uh, oh, 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 over there. You know, they got, they've got a rookie quarterback and they're not asking him to do too much over there and uh they have put a uh they've they've concentrated uh and not surprising bill belichick's you know concentrated on on building that defense back up over there and they they've got a good defense and if you if you have an offense that's you know at least you know sufficient and uh, do, doesn't put you in bad situations turning the football over, then you're going to win a you know a subset of the games. And if you can get this thing into the playoffs and and you know they might be the dark horse in this. I was just thinking this morning, man, are we are we are we faced now with a Patriots versus <laughs> Buccaneers uh, Super Bowl this year? So if there's anything whatsoever to look at right now and 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 maybe have some hope if the Steelers can 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 apply some of the the things to it is, is look at the Patriots and look how quickly that they've they've turned this thing around and, and they never really technically blew it up did they no I mean it was just one down year and they really didn't blow it up I mean they they, they were though very active in free agency this year with their tight ends and Smith right. and Henry and Bourne at receiver and of course the draft but it really I mean, if that's a blow up, I mean, we could all be so unfortunate to have that kind oh, yeah. of one year blow up. So uh, that's the model. But can you do that? Can you replicate it? It's a lot easier said than done, of course. And, and it, it's obviously too early to know if Mac Jones can can be that guy. But I mean, for a rookie season, what they're asking him to do offensively, and I mean, he's doing it. And you know, they look at look at the way they handled that game. I mean, they did what they had to do in that game against Buffalo to win the game. And how many, you know? How many veteran quarterbacks would love uh, uh, love that game plan? Not many, but mm-hmm. Mac Jones just knows to shut up and do what he's told and right. hand the ball off, yep. and they, they got the W in a very windy, hostile stadium like theirs. So you know, no, with the, you know, don't want to turn this into Patriots Depot, but I mean you got you got to you got to take your hat off and hand it to, to what what they've done over there in New England, and now it'll be interesting to see how far they can go uh, in, in this quick turnaround. About 15 minutes left, Dave and I, to answer your Steelers questions. If you guys could like the stream, that would help us out as well. 127 people in the chat. Really appreciate that. Also appreciate another $5 super chat from Farlap57, who says, I agree, guys. The Roonies have failed this team for not spending the money for free agency. Learn from the Patriots are doing 
for the last decade. To be fair, most off seasons, Pittsburgh has not had much money to play with, including this past one, because they've had, they retain their own, they have their franchise quarterback and those kinds of things. It wasn't until Brady came off the books that the Patriots really opened up their wallet and were able to spend some of that money with a rookie, rookie quarterback in play. So I think there's, there's just some recognition of that in some context there. We'll see what happens. Um, assuming that Ben's done and this team doesn't have the, as you like to say, uh, Dave, the sins of the franchise quarterback contract. Right. And, and I, you know, it'll be interesting to hear some real God honest, uh, you know, if, if you could hook, you know, Colbert and Rooney up to, to a lie detector. I mean, there was a, how many million dollar windfall in the salary cap this year? You know, uh, yeah, 20, 20, 24, 25, so somewhere mm. uh, along in that. And, you know, uh, this is a team that's, you know, obviously have the history of, 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 you know, paying, you know, uh, mortgaging, you know, with, with kicking the can down the road. And uh, at some point, especially when the, the cap, you know, you don't expect the cap to go backwards the amount that it did. I'm not, I'm not saying this is an excuse for them, but uh, uh, we did see them you, you utilize some practices that you probably wouldn't have thought they, they would have done with avoidable years and all like that. And, uh, you know, obviously Ben gave a little bit of back, but I mean, in, in the grand scheme of things, you know, it was like a million dollar cap charge yeah. uh, 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 for, for this year, though. And, uh, you know, people are probably still seeing that nine million dollars in cap space sitting there right now and say, well, they could have used that as well, too. But this is a team that also likes to, uh, uh, you know, have have some in reserves for elevations and in season moves and, and and that kind of stuff. So that kind of stuff was was, was status quo. There. Could. Yeah. And, and there's another factor here is, that, you know, I, I really, truly believe they were blindsided by the David DeCastro situation, you know, mm-hmm. right. And. You can't make me believe that this team thought going into the draft that there was a serious uh, chance that that they weren't going to have David DeCastro due to you know whatever the ankle issue or whatnot. If there mm-hmm. was, they probably would have drafted a lot different uh, to some degree that that than, than they actually did there. So uh, it would be it'd be interesting to hear you know uh, or, or when it comes time for Art Rooney to look back and talk about how maybe. The 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 not you know the uh, the COVID and all like that the impact on the cap how that played into the Steelers' plans of maybe putting an even better team uh, around Ben Ben Roethlisberger this year. Yeah, I'm sure it did. They knew prior to you know the COVID situation that they were going to lose some of their key guys, and then you had the COVID situation and the cap crunch and made a tough situation all the more difficult for sure. Couple comments here, and I want to read them off here. Quality Colos says, uh, "What does he say?" Um, Best podcast, keep it up, DNA. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, Michael O'Malley, big Mason Rudolph fan, still a believer, says Mason going to take the league by the short ones next year. He will be a savage, capital S on savage. Uh, Javier Mori says uh, Najee won't last uh, three seasons behind an O-line like this. He takes a lot of punishment. Yeah, leading the league in touches right now. Go back up here to a couple of the questions. About 10 minutes left in our live stream today. I had one from 007 who says, with the Ravens and the Bengals losing this week, would you say that the AFC North is still wide open for the taking? It is. Will the Steelers take it, though? Probably not, but it is wide open. Um, You can make a case for any of these teams. They all have a path, and they all kind of control, to an extent, their own destiny right now. So the AFC North is wide open. Will that be Pittsburgh taking it? They have a, a big mountain to climb. Just win, baby, as Just Ravens would Davis, say. <laughs> as Al Davis would say. So there you go. Uh, let's see. I think OMG Reptard said uh, his plan was to re-sign Akello. Sutton is your slot, and you need to sign a starter in free agency. Sign a strong safety starter, too. Then draft O-line rounds one and two. Yeah, I mean, there'll be a lot of plans. I mean, I don't think Sutton's going to be their slot. He, he, he could have been the guy this year. He was not. They prefer him on the outside. He only plays inside in dime packages where run defense is less of an issue. So I think Sutton will continue to be this team's right cornerback or left corner if they want to flip him if Hayden does not return. You know, and, and uh, Kella, we'll see how he plays these final four games. Uh, the, the best case scenario, if they want to spend, you know, if they're go- where should they spend the money the most? And we we went over the the, the corners. Now, obviously, some are, might get cut. It might become open. You know, at a later date, it's hard to predict that stuff as we right. sit here right now. But uh, uh, you know, and and you're gonna have to put some sort of value on Joe Hayden and know that even if you do resign him, you you might only get a half a season out of him. 
you know. Right. Uh, but is that half a season worth? I don't know, six, seven, you know, uh, mil- million, uh, you know, eight million a season, right around in there. And then, uh, you know, can can you get a, a Keller resign for? You know, three or four million, maybe that's the number there. And then it's, you know, re sign Edmonds for, I don't know, three, four million right around there. Because once again, if you don't re sign him, how are you going to fill that spot? Mm-hmm. And, and are you going to be able to up, up, you know, f- for, for the same amount of price, be able to find a better option there uh, in, in a very, very thin positional market? So, you know, I and it's way early here. I mean, I guess I could see them resigning Akello, resigning Hayden, resigning Edmonds, and then what are you going to do at the inside linebacker? You know, uh, that that's probably where you probably were might want to concentrate uh, some of your some of your serious serious free agent spending if mm-hmm. if, if indeed you go that way uh, right. there, and then obviously hope that Tuit comes back and. And and uh, Alu Alus can can stay healthy for one more season and maybe try to roll it that way. Yeah, and then draft O line heavy as uh yes, the, the, yes. The, the reader had said there. So yeah, this thing can go a lot of different ways. I don't have a good feel for it yet. I haven't really pu- put a lot of thought into all that that kind of stuff. So we're talking through it kind of together here live. We've got a five dollars. Pe- pe- people are not going to like the conversation of re-signing uh, Troll Edmonds, but it might be something that. Yeah, I, I, I think people need to maybe start resigning the fact that it's possible. Mm-hmm. $5 Super Chat from Findle 70 says, Regarding draft evaluations, I'm thinking that rather than a new voice at coaching, the organization could use new scouting talent, evaluate the evaluators. Yeah, you're always going to look at that kind of stuff. Pittsburgh has, 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 I would say, easily the best continuity in its scouting staff of any franchise, which is no surprise given how the franchise is made up from GM and head coach, et cetera. Uh, Phil Kreidler has been with Pittsburgh since the 90s. I mean, he's might be the longest tenured guy in that building, not named Aruni. Um, and so a lot of the other assistant scouts uh, scouts have been here. I think every single scout has been here for at least five seasons. And so besides like Dennis McGinnis, who's an intern that, that it's kind of worked his way up the ladder a little bit. So it's a good question. This team still overall, I think it's drafted pretty well. The 17 class was excellent. Um, 18, not so much, but you know, this year's class is shaping up to be pretty decent, especially at the top with Harris and Fryermuth. So I don't know if that's what you want to change, but sir, sure, you're always going to look at, at, at what everyone is doing inside your building. Uh, let's see, I had a question here. I think it was from Bornfly23 asking about will Dwayne Haskins get a chance to show his worth either next year or maybe this year, not this year, uh, provided there aren't injuries or things like that. I mean, He'll probably be be back in camp next year, right? There, I mean, he's restricted for agent. They can tender him really cheap and you know, first round tender or no, um, original round tender, I should say, and bring him back. So he'll probably return, but will he really have a chance to compete? I, I doubt it. Hey, hey, here's what you do with him, and it's a very simple process. You just put an original round tender on him for the for the low amount, and what's that? Three million? What's it going to be? Three million or so? I sounds even looked, right. Yeah. Uh, look, looked at those numbers there, but you put the original round tender on him. Uh, that will easily keep him, and then you invite him to training camp, and you you yeah you 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 see you make sure he keeps his nose clean throughout all the off season and all like that. Then you then you have him compete for the spot. Uh, plain and simple, and that's a not, you know, those restricted tenders are, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't, I, they're not fully guaranteed there, so uh, you don't have anything invested, I, I don't think, other than just a signed piece of paper, and if he can make your roster a, a, as a backup, fine. Now, he, to me, if you're going to spend that kind of, you know, e- even though it's only $3 million or whatever it is, he better win the backup quarterback job at a minimum. If he can't do that, mm-hmm. then, you, cut him. you know. Then, 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 then you cut them, I think. There, so yeah, I mean, you have, you really don't have a lot to lose, I don't think, other than you know, tendering him and then giving him the opportunity to uh, to compete in camp. Now, do I think you have anything there with him? No, but you know, I, I guess stranger things have happened. If you tender him, would he make more than what Mason Rudolph is scheduled to make on his extension? Say again. How much is Mason Rudolph supposed to make in 2022 on his extension? Is that more or less than what the tender roughly will be for Haskins? Uh, it's going to be roughly about the same because I think Mason is scheduled to earn three million dollars uh, in 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 2022 as a base salary. Now you okay. also got to kind of factor in there that you know he got a bonus this yeah, year. Yeah, just roughly, I'm, I'm speaking. Yeah, so uh, th- 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 those two ought to be making roughly about the same if you tender. Uh, if you tender uh, Dwayne Haskins that okay. original round. Gotcha. Just wondering on that. 
Super chat here from Tim Chase, about five minutes left here with Dave and I, and all you guys appreciate your being here. It says, I'll give you this $5 not to sign Edmonds back. We'll take it. We have no control over this, but we'll put <laughs> it in the funds. I don't have control over that. Uh, real quick here, it looks like the uh, RFA tenders for 2022. Actually, uh, lower. looks like uh, uh, right of first uh, refusal is two point, almost $2.4 million. Oh, so, good. Uh, I, you know, obviously I would think that they have adjusted this to what the uh, NFL just came out uh, recently and, and said is you know, likely to hit the, uh, the ceiling amount there uh, projected there. So 2.4 million, it looks like will be a right of first refusal, uh, 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 original round tender, if you will, for, for Haskins. And that will easily protect him from other teams because no team's going to give up a first round right. draft pick, uh, because that was his original round, uh, to, uh, to, to sign him away there. So that, that should be a piece of cake and we should hear about the restricted tender for him, I guess, around March or so. There you go. Todd says, do you guys miss Vince? Of course, referring to Vince Williams. I do. I could use a Vince Williams on this defense right now. The Steelers could as well. Yeah, uh, you know, especially events from like a couple years ago, for sure. Or even last year. I will take Vince of last year <laughs> okay. for this team. Uh, let's see. 007 says, do you think that Chase Clay was becoming a distraction to this team? Should he be shown the exit door? No, I would not show him the exit door. Um, is it a distraction? I don't know if I would go that far, but it's certainly been a lot of immaturity and a lot of things that are causing stories that shouldn't be stories and things that are also just objectively hurting the team, like penalties and celebrations and those kinds of things. So am I cutting him? No. Do I want him to not be as immature as he is? Yes. So yeah, go. look, I mean, just uh, – so they, they, they open mouth, insert foot, as my old man said, you yeah. know, told me growing up and all like that. You just like to see him – have more awareness, I guess, and, and understand the optics a little bit more. I don't think he's a bad kid overall. I just think he's, you know, he may obviously made a you know, bad, bad choice late in that game against the Vikings there. And man, just uh, stay on the sideline and don't be, don't, don't stick out for anything other than making some great catches down the field for a few more weeks here with him. Yeah, but they're just, ha even this off season, when we got that fight this off season, remember that he like kicked the guy or something that wasn't a huge story, yeah, but it was a story great. and you, they got all this other stuff. It's just, it, yeah, he's not a bad guy, but just a lot of things that just, just angry. Yeah. Frustrate you. A uh, couple people asking, do we think Juju will get re-signed? I don't know. It's, I it's mean, it's plausible. I mean, because his market value is going to be depressed again. Right. But, I but mean, Ben's likely to be gone. He came back for Ben. Right. So what do you do? Right. I mean, he would be foolish not to at least test free agency again and 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 see what happens. You know. So yeah. uh, <laughs> I mean, is he worth another what to give him, nine million or so? Eight, uh, eight or nine million. I mean, I. I don't know if you can, can if you're the Steelers. I don't know if you can give them that much, even that much th this no. time around. You know. Yeah, I think it's like six, maybe just based on the market. But the cap will go up, so it's 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 plausible. It's kind of the theme of Steelers for agency. It's plausible. We don't really know right. what's going to happen right now. And again, our focus has been so much on in-season stuff. Anyway, Keith with two exclamation points says, "What do you think the chance of Gentry adding more weight and moving to tackle?" We had joked about that in the summer. Um, it'd be it's a thought. I mean, people people ran with it then, like it was their idea then. Yeah. But I, it, it would be pretty amazing if they did that. Yeah, I, I think, don't see it happening. I think they finally get a good run blocking tight end and want to keep it that way. So I think he's going to stay at tight end. Tim, I, I hear you would on. You, would your bolt clay pull up a little bit, make a flex tight end out of him a little bit? That that might be a conversation. Uh I don't know. I mean. If if you can't think he can win as a Z receiver and you're desperate, then maybe. But he just the hands aren't really there good enough for him to like be a middle of the field type guy consistently and reliably. That's kind of the concern with playing him more in that slot or or Y kind of role. Do you still view him as a second round grade, or should he have been a third round grade? I mean, I don't really think about grades after the fact. But is he playing to the second round you know level overall? No, he's not. Uh, I think that's safe to say. All right. Uh, Tim, I hear you on Sutton in the slot. I was suggesting to play Sutton in the slot all summer, but uh, just from what the team is doing with him, they've, they've kind of viewed him as an outside kind of a guy, and I think Trey Newward can move into the slot next year as a way to get him on the field because uh, Mink is obviously not going to move off his free safety spot. I think a couple, one or two more questions here, one from Colin Childress. How are the comp picks looking? I haven't browsed Nick Cortez's uh, feed or over the cap site recently, but I'm anticipating right now 
that they will get a fifth round pick, that Joe Haig won't be over that 25% mark with the time that he's missed. And I think they'll probably get a fourth round pick for Bud Dupree. So I'm going to go with a fourth and a fifth in terms of comp picks for 2020. Y'all, yeah, yeah. What, what, while, while you had that rosary pulled out, uh, uh, say one for Bud Dupree to get on the field. Yeah. <laughs> Once he, is he eligible? We don't know the answer to this. When's he eligible to come off? Is it this week? Is it next week? I thought it was, I thought there was a, this pot- week? maybe a, a potential that he'd be back this week. Sounded I, right. uh, that, that, I thought I saw a tweet, uh, from, from Jim Wyatt or something this morning on that, uh, overall, but, uh, pray for him to get back on the field quick. Yeah, because uh, his snap count is directly tied into whether or not Pittsburgh gets a third or a fourth. Barlap57 says, shout out, you guys are great. Thank you, thank you, Barlap. Appreciate your two super chats tonight. Here, one or two more questions, and then we'll go watch some Monday Night Football with the rest of you guys. Uh, Donald Mulligan, should the Steelers draft Kenny Pickett or wait next year for and trade up for Bryce Young? That's a lot of questions there, Donald, both big and small. Actually, mostly big questions here. We'll see. I mean, thinking about Bryce Young in the future. Is Bryce Young an NFL quarterback, though? He's got a good arm. I haven't evaluated him, but the dude can throw the football. He's a little skinny, though. It, it looked tiny, like, ain't he? Yeah, but, <laughs> uh, I mean, you saw that one throw we had. I mean, this dude's got a cannon, so we'll see. Uh, let's see if I can find maybe just one or two more questions, if I can find any in here. Or maybe it just comments. David O says, great job, Alex and Dave. Thank you, David O. And Jamie says, "Oh, Matt, uh, Jay Norvell and Matt Mummy, you know, are no longer at Nevada. They're at uh, they're at uh, what Colorado State now. So, going to be interesting to see what quarterback ends up there mm. uh, the, these next couple of years because they, you know, uh, obviously Mummy runs that uh, that air raid offense there, and and uh, just something to put put in the back of everybody's head to keep an eye eye on who's the quarterback at, at, at Colorado State's going to be. There you go. And then Jamie says, Think Banner gets context next year.'" I don't know if that means contract or starting job. He's under contract for next season. We'll see what happens with the core for another question that I'm still, I think he goes, but I'm not a hundred percent sure on man. And, and banner still can't crack your starting lineup right now. Yeah. You know, and yeah. how many total snaps has banner played? How many, <laughs> how many true offensive tackle snaps has Zach banner played in the NFL? Even uh, before Pittsburgh. Like in, his entire in, career. In, entire career. How many offensive snaps at tackle? Not not, yeah, not, not tackle eligible. eligible. Uh, that's a good question. In Pittsburgh, it's been about 50-something elsewhere with the Browns and the Colts. Did he ever? I don't know if he did. Maybe he did at some like point. Like eight or something. What? Yeah, or... that sounds right. So let's just – under 75 total. And he <laughs> – I mean, he doesn't he, – people are clamoring to get him in at, at, at uh, starting at right tackle. But you don't even have really any you know tape to go yeah. on right now. There, there's nothing – you can't hang your hat on right now. I don't think the fact – I mean, you could hope for it, but you can't hang your hat on, oh, yeah, uh, Zach Banner will be the starting right tackle in, in 2022 and, and be fine. Sure, but you did pay the guy a decent amount of money. You know, you'd like I to know, know what you had with that, and, and you want to see what you have and if he can provide some sort of spark, but it uh, doesn't appear to be the direction this team is going. So on that note, we'll wrap things up. You guys can see an archive version of this on YouTube and also over on SteelersDepot.com. Dave and I will, will be back in two weeks, hopefully with some better Steelers news. Really appreciate uh, the showing tonight. Really good turnout. Uh, after a loss, I wasn't sure if anyone was going to show up tonight, so you guys were awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the super chats. They were tremendous, and the, appreciate the support. We'll have a lot of videos and content on my channel and on SteelersDepot.com. Dave, as always, thanks for hanging out with us. And and everybody give Alex a, a a golf clap here. He does a fantastic Thank job you. with these. Makes makes my job real easy in doing these as well too. So peace and love, everybody. Thank you for showing up tonight. Yep. Thank you guys so much, and we'll talk to you soon.